I'm Mark Armstrong. I am with uh, Square out of Dallas, and I'm also one of the hosts here with TechSoup. Although out of Dallas, but tonight I'm coming from Houston, so I'm not going to be on camera. Rebecca is with the Trellis Social Enterprise, supporting charitable organizations, hospital foundations, nonprofits, and other organizations to find new online approaches to raising funds for their causes they care about don't want to take up too much of her time. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Rebecca. It is so good to be here and I'm really excited to chat with you all today. But before we get started, I wanted to actually make a promise to all of you. By the time that this call ends, I'm guaranteeing that you are all going to write down at least three notes in your notebook from what I'm going to share. And if you don't, I need you to throw it in the chat and let me know, because my goal here is that you all walk away with tons of new ideas. So for your cardboard boat races, if you're doing galas or if you're doing golf tournaments, you all have really clear next steps on how to make your event more successful. Okay, a little bit nervous about that promise I just made, but actually hold me accountable. You guys have all just given up one hour of your evening or your day, depending on where you are right now. And so my goal is to make this so valuable for you. And I'm really excited because we've got some really effective tactics to help your event marketing. And whether you're new to marketing or if you've been doing this for years, my goal here is that after this session, you walk away with some really clear next steps on how you can raise more. But before we get started, I wanted to share a quick story with you about the impact that good marketing can have. During the pandemic, Shannon was really close to having to shut down her entire organization. They lacked the funds they needed to support their programs and were about to have to let go of most of their employees. But Shannon didn't want to give up. And instead, she started to plan an online event with the goal of $40,000. It was going to be just enough to keep them open. You might know what that feels like. The pandemic has been so hard for so many organizations. And for Shannon in particular, as an organization that supports moms and a lot of single parents, Shannon knew that she couldn't let them down. Through a strategic focus on social media, email marketing, and utilizing her event partners to reach a wider network, Shannon was able to raise over $220,000 in less than 24 hours. A huge piece of her success came from leveraging her event partners, which is a strategy we're going to talk about today. Now, I know not everyone in here is coming from the same starting point. Some of you might not have large networks or have email lists or budgets like Shannon that you can rely on, but the tactics that I'm going to talk about today are going to work for every one of you. So here's what I want to do. Let's briefly review an event marketing schedule, dive into types of social media content that catches attention, and then get to what to do if you don't have a big email list or you don't have a big social media following. And then get to what to do if you um, have set all of this stuff up and how you can keep iterating or reiterating on the lessons you're learning to keep raising more and building up that plan for years to come. Just a heads up, we are going to go pretty quick through the first two, and then we're going to really dive into the last two sections, which are event partnering and partners and data tracking. And Kevin, we definitely will talk about email marketing as well. Throughout this session, I'll also share some real life examples and ideas from organizations that have succeeded. And again, my goal here is that you guys all walk away with some clear next steps on how to market your next fundraiser and how to track it all effectively. In addition to that, we have put together a guide on event marketing that goes so much further into depth than what I'm able to talk about in this chat uh, or in this conversation right here. If you all want to grab a copy of the guide, I would highly recommend doing so. I'm just going to throw a link into the chat right now, but you can also use the link on the screen or the QR code. But I would think about this talk like step one. And then the guide is going to be your step two. So we cover the same topics, but the guide includes some more how-to steps to build out posts or examples to follow and advice to give you from your industry event partners that we work with. There's also some worksheets and checklists to help make sure that you aren't missing anything else as well. But before we get into all of that, maybe first a quick intro about who we are. Uh, we're from Trellis and we help charities 
and nonprofits with their fundraising from events, auctions, and raffles, working exclusively exclusively in the nonprofit space. And with that, we help charities with every all of their events from galas to golf tournaments. And hey, we can even do some cardboard boat races, I'm sure. But we have supported hundreds of charities on Trellis. And from that, we have learned a ton from their successes and failures. I've personally been involved in helping about 300 charities execute their events. So I'm going to share with you some of my favorite ideas and tips and tricks to make sure your fundraising events are a success too. I'm Rebecca and um, I am joining you up from Canada, but excited to be here and share more about what we're doing and what we're learning in the fundraising space. We also have a chat open. So as you've been throwing in some details already, keep throwing in questions that you have as I'm chatting. We're going to leave some time for Q&A at the end, and we would love to get into them. I'm joining you from the unceded territory of the Sea Oaks people, and we wanted to just take a quick moment here to recognize the land that we all get to live and work on. Like I said earlier, we're going to move really quickly through the first two sections and then really dive into the last two. But again, because we are going quick, if you have any questions at all, make sure to throw them in the chat. But the first thing we wanted to do was go back to square one and talk about the entire event marketing schedule before we dive into the specifics on how to execute one, each of these events or each of these elements. Now to get us started, I've put together a rough timeline, but just know that these timeframes may look different for your organization and that is totally okay. First, you're gonna start planning for your next event the day that your last event ends. You'll want to start announcing your next event during the current event and then start sharing it with attendees through email too. Next step, you're going to launch your ticket sales. And when you do, I would highly recommend emailing past attendees to invite them. Use your email newsletter to let your donors know and also start posting about it on social media. You'll also want to message all of your event partners and ask them to share it with your networks as well. But we're going to get into that a little bit further in just a second here. Next, in the few weeks or months leading up to the event, you're going to want to increase the frequency of all of your marketing tactics, including social media and email. And in the last couple of weeks before the event, start personal reach outs to encourage your donors to attend. That could be a phone call or a personal email as well. Personally, we love the idea of a phone call. It could be a really simple two minute call from a leader in your organization just letting people know what you have planned for the event and giving them that direct invitation to attend. Not only does that go a long way for your donors, but that personal connection can have, help you build those really valuable relationships for your organization. Then in the final week before the event, make sure to keep reminding your event partners to reshare posts about your event or to create their own announcements about their involvement with your fundraiser. We've seen some really creative ideas when it comes to fundraising events. And one of my colleagues actually heard this idea and it has quickly become one of our favorites. I would actually take a screenshot of it now so you have it and you can see it for your next fundraiser too. But the whole idea is finding new ways to incentivize your donors to buy tickets sooner. This could include using discounts or entries or special gifts. And one of the organizations we supported, they involved their sponsors. They asked their sponsors to donate 100 bottles of wine, and those first 100 people that bought tickets got a complimentary bottle of wine that they could enjoy during the event, either virtually or in person. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but if there was a bottle of wine on the line, I am definitely going to buy my ticket sooner. And as you think about your donors and the people that are participating in your fundraiser, maybe it's wine or maybe it's something else. But I'll challenge you to think about how can you incentivize to buy people to buy things earlier by finding different ways to engage them based on their preferences. Okay, so that covers like a high level event strategy and timelines. But again, let's take a second here. And if you have any questions at all, please throw them in the chat. I'm just going to read them right now, but we will definitely do a quick live, uh, live Q&A at the very end here. So again, we can answer any of those questions. And while you're doing that, let's move into our next topic, which is all around social media. 
Okay, so I would love to hear from all of you as well about this. Is social media a struggle for your organization or is it something you feel like you're succeeding at? Throw it in the chat because I would love to know. Barry, I see a yes. And sorry, I asked that question poorly. Yes, as in we're struggling or yes, as in we're succeeding. It'd be great to know. And I would love to know what the rest of you saw. Kathy says it is a struggle. Kevin, IG and Facebook is fine for us. Email is hard because we don't have a dedicated person. Totally get that. Yes, we're struggling. Oh, Barry's struggling. Okay, awesome. Good to know, Barry. We're not very good at social media. A little of both. Have a volunteer that handles a lot, but it's hard to keep up. Totally. And as I'm talking to more and more people, and as I'm presenting actually to a lot of different groups right now, this is really common. Some people say, hey, we're actually doing okay at some of these platforms like Facebook and Instagram. So that's really great to hear. Kevin, that's working for you. And some people are like, we're just struggling across the board. It's all hard. Other people say, hey, we're actually doing okay, but we've plateaued. We're not getting any better, but we think we could. So just know, first of all, that you're not alone. And I mean, just in the chat alone, we can see that uh, a lot of you guys are in the same place. But hopefully these ideas are going to get you started and thinking about what you can do as well. From the organizations that we're working with, what we find is that the organizations that focus on social media, they tend to get pretty great engagement and they often engage donors outside of their typical demographic. Of those organizations that I'm thinking of, they all tend to use five key elements or a formula with five different elements that are working really well for them. The first one is a catchy and clear call to action. They all have an easy to read and remember link, um, an engaging image, attention grabbing captions, and they use tagging and hashtagging to help spread the word. So we thought, why don't we take a look at a post, a social media post from an organization that's doing really well. And I in particular love this one from a hospital we support called Jordan Bay Hospital Foundation. First, they have a really clear call to action to register for the event, which is great. It gives an easy and really direct next step for people to take. Their call to action is simply help raise more for Georgian Bay Hospital Foundation by registering for free at this link. It's direct and donors know exactly what they're being asked to do. When you're thinking about captions, I would encourage you to be direct and active in your tone so that your donors are really clear on what you're actually asking them to do and what action they need to take. Next, do they have a link? Now on Instagram, you can put the link in the bio at the very top of your page or an easy link that people can copy and paste in the description works too. Other social media platforms make it really easy to click the link directly in your posts. And in this post in particular, they've just included a link in their description. But again, it's nice and short, so it's really easy for people to copy and paste. Third, they have an engaging photo. If Lane, that this fundraiser is going to be so much fun. Lane the auctionista has a captivating smile. They've got their bright pink jacket on, which again, just really draws the eyes for people. They've also added in a great caption. It starts with the words record breaking, which helps get more attention. Using words that bring a sense of urgency, help get other people excited about your event and also get your donors engaged as they're scrolling through on social media. You wanna use words that are gonna get people to actually pause when they're scrolling rather than can keep scrolling through. Another tactic to increase the reach of your post is to tag the individuals involved and encourage them to reshare the post. Again, if you want to go one step further, using hashtags is a great way to increase engagement and make your posts more relevant and searchable. I will let you know now, you probably aren't going to see an immediate return from using things like hashtags or tags, but in the long run, the payoff will definitely be there. Okay, so maybe you're looking at this and you're like, Rebecca, this all sounds really great. And yeah, I can follow the five steps and the kind of the formula that you're outlining, but I don't have somebody dedicated to social media or a graphic designer in my back pocket that can make graphics that look like the one we were just looking at. If that is you, that is totally okay. In the guide that I mentioned up at the beginning, and I threw a link to in the chat already, we actually recommend our favorite free tools to create Instagram worthy images. So you can check those out. Again, they're all free. So hopefully there's one that works for you and can help you build some graphics that are really engaging and can have really stop your donors in their tracks as they're scrolling to get them engaging with you guys. 
in our guide, we actually also outline the template to create your own social media posts. So if you haven't grabbed the guide yet, make sure to do this. And I'm just going to throw it into the chat here again, one more time. So it's at the front. Okay. And before we move on, I would love to see if anybody has any other questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, Bill, I see that you just threw one in there and let's definitely jump into that at the end when we go to Q and A, a great question. And I would love to answer that then. Okay, so now you may be thinking, I've never done this event before, so I don't have an old email list to go back to, or I don't have a big social media following or a big email list to rely on. And I don't actually have that budget to do online ads. And even if I did, I probably wouldn't know where to start or what to use that for. So what about me? If that is you, think your saving grace is going to be what we're talking about next. And that's utilizing your event partners and network to help your marketing efforts reach a wider audience. You may be wondering what we mean by marketing event partners. And truly, our event partners are every single person involved in the execution and planning of your event. And before you start thinking to yourself, I don't think I have any of those. I figured let's make a list here of all the different event partners that you do actually have. So first, let's start with our sponsors. Maybe you have a live auction, or maybe you've got a silent auction and it has 10 items in it. Now you've got 10 people right there that you can reach out to, all of them your auction item sponsors. Maybe you've got a restaurant that's providing food and they're your restaurant sponsor, or an in-kind sponsors that are providing other elements like decor or technology for your event. And then you're also gonna have some monetary sponsors too. Next, you've got your organization supporters. This could be your volunteers, your staff, your board members, and your key donors. Who is it in this group for you, and how can you engage all of them? Or you might have community influencers and thought leaders in your community or your industry. How can you engage them and ask them to share what you're doing? Remember, these are all people that already love your organization and would be happy to share your events. So you just need to make ask for them. Next, you've got your talents. Maybe you've got speakers or hosts or auctioneers or bands or, or performers that are all participating in the event. These individuals tend to also have a following um, already, so you can leverage that as much as possible. And then our last category is going to be our event partners, and we like to talk to them as our fundraising professionals. The AV team, the venue, the event planners, fundraising consultants, and production companies. Keep in mind, fundraising professionals, especially those local to you, will be especially willing to share your event. So now that we know who your event partners are, you're going to want to make it really easy and set them up for um, success in order to engage them throughout your fundraising. So here are three really simple ways to get you started. One, tag your partners in social media and encourage them to reshare your posts. Two, make it easy for them to share. Create a Google Drive with social posts that they can use. And finally, add it to a partner contract. When you have it in writing that owner or that your event partners have to engage with you in certain ways, it is way easier to hold them accountable the whole way through. And it just sets that relationship on the right foot when it's right from day one for you as well. Another tactic that I think you might want to steal in the screenshot is making inviting people a game. And we actually mean that. With your organization supporters, give each one of them a custom affiliate marketing and set a goal on how many invites you want them to send out. Give them an email template and set expectations. Then each week, give an update on how many people and how many emails were sent from each person. And you can see who the current winner is for inviting the most people. When the event ends, then you can give the winner a prize for how many people they brought to your fundraiser. And that could be um, all of the people that are considered your event partners, or maybe you just focus on the people in your board. Whoever it is, make it really engaging and make it super fun the entire way through to encourage them to keep participating in this way. With your event partners and then your own reach out as well, email communication is also really key. Consistent emails pushing to your fundraiser, reminding people to buy tickets and giving them updates and getting people excited will help you in get, drive more engagement. Plan a strategy around this entire element and use email campaign drips and regular emails to keep engaging your existing email lists and donors as well. In the guide, we actually talk about each sponsor type and some really great ways to engage all of your partners based on their sponsor type too. 
Unfortunately, right now, we just don't have the time to like really dive into each one. So again, I'd highly encourage you to download that guide and then you can see and read through all the different options and ideas we have. We also dive a lot more into email marketing in there too. So you can get some more ideas around that element specifically. We are going to pause here and move on to our next section, which is all about data collection. But again, if you have any questions at all, please throw them in the chat now around event partners or anything else I've mentioned. And we will definitely do our Q&A at the end. And we have some questions already, but I'd love to answer some more at that time too. So as exciting as it can be to get the word out there and really focus on that piece, it is also so important to track and learn which of your marketing efforts are working. So for your next fundraiser, you can drill down on what's working for your organization. Again, like everything else, there are so many different ways you can approach this, but we're giving you the most effective and easiest ways to get it started. And a simple and easy way to get started is to set up a custom question at checkout so that when guests buy a ticket, you can ask them how they heard about your event. You'll have the most success if you make this uh, question required and give your donors a drop down list with all the different options of how they could have potentially heard about you and what you're doing. So first, when you're setting up your ticketing page, you're going to add in a custom question to each ticket option that says something along the lines of, where did you hear about this fundraiser? Then you'll add, include some drop down options like a friend or family member, social media, an event partner, social media, an email newsletter, or whatever other tactics you have. If you want to get more specific, you can add in an additional question asking for the name of the friend or company that referred them as well. But then when your donors go to support your event, they'll see this question when they're paying for their tickets. And if you've made them required, you'll get all of the information in one easy place. Now, don't be afraid to make changes as you go. So if right at the beginning, everybody is coming from social media, use that early information to steer how you're gonna keep promoting your event. You don't have to wait till the very end to actually learn from all the data that is being collected. And once you started to collect this information, use the data to make better marketing decisions for your next event by focusing more time and energy and potential money on what's actually working for your organization. Another great tactic I wanted to just briefly touch on was affiliate marketing links. With your fundraising page URL, you can create a different link for each social media platform, website, event partners, board members, or anywhere else or anybody else you think of will be interested in sharing your fundraising page. What that would look like is an actual link. So let's say our fundraising page is trellis.org slash cardboard boat race 2022. You can add a, a new link, which is that exact link slash Facebook or slash email signature, whatever the different channel is that people are coming from. And then you'll be able to see in a report exactly how many dollars came through each of those channels and which channels drove the most money for you. Using this information can help you figure out which platforms are getting you the most engagement. And again, you can focus your time and energy on what's easy and how you can get more and more people to engage with you. Um, if you're like, wow, this seems like a lot, it's all new to me, no worries at all. We will go through some next steps in just a second here. Um, so you can make sure that you get some help with all of these pieces. So now that we've got more people engaging with our fundraiser, we want to make sure that you continue to grow your email list. And this really ties back to that question that you had at the very beginning there, Kevin, of what about me? What do I do if I don't have a big email list to go back to? And as unfortunate and not helpful in this exact moment as this feedback or this help is for you, I'd encourage you to start growing your email list now so that when it comes to your next fundraiser, you've got a list that you can start going out to and go back to people with. This is going to just make it significantly easier to promote your event when you, your next event, when you do have that donor base to reach out to. And again, there are two easy ways to do this. One, you could add a note in your ticket, letting people know that they will be added to your email list. Or two, you could add another custom question asking people if they wish to be added to your email list. If you're worried about double opt-ins where you're based, no need to. All you have to do is after the event, you can follow up with your, all of your newly collected email addresses and ask people um, to confirm if they want to be added to your list. This will achieve that double opt-in. 
and help you grow your email list so that you're ready to market your next fundraising event too. Okay, let's review what we've done so far. So here are the four things we talked about, but there is one more piece that we haven't actually mentioned yet that I really want to get into because I think it might actually be the most important. But we started by talking about event marketing schedules. Then we went into click-worthy social media posts. We talked about event partners and then auto da also data collection. But like I just said, there is one last piece I haven't mentioned, and I think it's really important. You might not take it as seriously, but I think, in fact, it might be the most important element to your fundraising. And with that, it's that you need a software that can support your event marketing, and I'll tell you why. Um, it single-handedly has the ability to change your success. The wrong software won't have custom checkout fields, which might only sound like one element to you, but if you don't ask your donors for the right information, you won't get the right insights and you won't be able to grow your charity. And if you don't have the options to customize your social media posts, then you will be able to create engaging posts that will get your audience engaged and excited and drive more traffic to your event, which again, ultimately is going to help you raise more money. I'm just dying with my cough right now. <clears throat> Before today, how many of you knew what affiliate marketing links were? And if you did, how many of you were actually using them? As I'm talking to more and more organizations right now, I'm finding out that actually a lot of them may know what affiliate marketing links are, but not that many of them are actually using them, and you should be. Uh, you should also be looking for a software that can give you those resources so you don't have to try and find another tool to do this one piece. And if your software currently doesn't offer affiliate marketing links, then I would recommend switching and finding one that actually does. And then event analytic tools. You need to learn more about what worked well after the event. And if you can't see any analytics or results or see page views after the event, then that is something you need to start looking into. Those insights, again, are critical if you want to improve your marketing strategy and raise more for your, organiz for your organization. Okay, I know that was a lot of information, so thank you so much for all listening. I'm Rebecca, and all of my contact details are on the screen here, but I would love to chat with you. Those four pieces that I mentioned in particular, custom checkout fields, customizing social media, affiliate marketing links, and event analytic tools, we actually do those pieces at Trellis, and I've worked really closely with our product team to make sure that they have different tools and resources in our platform that are going to help you raise more money because good marketing comes back to helping you raise more and ultimately hitting your goals. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So I would love to chat with you and learn more about what you guys are doing and how we can support your fundraising. If that makes sense for you, then you can see the link that's just right here on the screen. I'll also throw it in the chat. If you want to connect with our team and talk more, but for right now, why don't we open up the floor to some questions? And as I'm answering some of these questions, if you've got more, again, throw them in the chat. I'd love to answer more and help, yeah, help you guys as I know we talked about a lot. Sorry, I usually, we usually tag team this and we have two people here, one to do questions and one to do this, but I'm going to do it all simultaneously. So Kevin, I know earlier you asked around email marketing. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. And then, yeah, email, sorry if you don't have a social media person. Sorry, guys, bear with me. What social media is working best for organizations? Honestly, Bill, this is a pretty hard question to answer. So sorry that I'm not going to have a very great answer for you, but I'm going to try my best. Real, really, every organization finds different social media platforms tend to work best for them. Again, total cop out of an answer, I know. But if we were to break it down, why don't we talk about the four different platforms most people are using and we can talk about some pros and cons of each one. First one is Facebook. I would have to say, if I was to say that one, or one social platform works the best for organizations across the board, I would probably say Facebook. Reason being is that just everybody is on Facebook and it's really easy to find a niche of exact people in the location and around the same causes that your organization supports. So uh, Facebook's also a really great platform to post pictures and videos and all sorts of different content, as well as just text right through a caption. So you have lots of uh, flexibility around what you're going to post on there. Um, also, 
really great if you're sending people links or you want people to go to a different link. You just, they click the link, they get sent right there. So if I had to choose, let's say Facebook's probably the one that's going to be the most catch-all and help you, help you in that regard the best. Next platform that I wanted to mention was Instagram. Instagram's great if um, you've got some really engaging and visually appealing content that you can keep posting. They don't make links very easy. Having it in your bio or in your description, it's great, but it's not the easiest. So just something to bear in mind. And Instagram's really great if you've got a lot of video content. They actually help push more video content on their platform as well. So again, something else to just bear in mind. The next one I wanted to mention was Twitter. Twitter is really good for like quick captions, keeping people up to date. So more real time is a whole basis of the platform. Again, super easy to share links and do all of that stuff. And then the last one that I would mention would be LinkedIn. LinkedIn's really good if you've got a lot of uh, professionals in your donor base, or that is a donor base that you want to go after. A lot more professionals will be on LinkedIn and they can they check it less frequently than other social platforms. So posts will last longer, right? Three days is like average lifespan of a social media post on LinkedIn versus Twitter. I think they say it's like an hour, right? So just totally different in terms of what people are going there for and what kind of information they're looking for. But those who I would say are your top four. If I had to choose, I'd say most people find Facebook works the best for them. Again, just because you've got the widest audience, you can really narrow it down into the organizations or the types of individuals that you want to engage with. Barry, I see your note here. I doubled your three tips. Okay, perfect. I've got six tips in your notebook. Um, amazing. Hopefully the rest of you guys did too, but that would be amazing. Um, and if you didn't, again, let me know because we have 25 minutes. We can still change that. Kevin, how does your software work? Is it attached to our website? Yeah, so we are a tech platform. So it would be similar to if you guys have used things like for you, Kevin, in Canada, maybe Canada Helps or Eventbrite or different platforms like that. So it is a web-based platform. People go to a website and then they can participate in your fundraiser. Uh, we're an all-in-one platform. So we do tickets, donations, silent and live auctions, raffles, 50-50s. What am I missing? You can also sell items on our platform as well. And then we also offer live streaming. So if you're doing a hybrid or a virtual event, people can live stream through Trellis too. And because everything's all in one place, it's super easy for your donors to participate in all elements of your fundraiser simultaneously. You can shoot me an email and you can see my emails on the screen there, or we are doing some demos. So if you want to sign up for a demo and like check out what Trellis looks like, then you can definitely do that. But beyond being like the all-in-one fundraising platform, the other benefit that a lot of organizations use us for is some of those marketing pieces we talked about. So the custom affiliate links, the custom questions we have, you can customize your social media posts, and then we can also do event analytics. So again, leading up to the event, you've got all your fundraising pieces there, but we can also support with the marketing pieces as well that we talked about. Is it attached to our website? Yes, you would be able to redirect it from your website. That's what most people do. So they'll just have a banner on their website. It says click here to participate in our event, whatever that looks like. People click it, it just redirects them to your Charles page. Again, though, if you have any other questions, feel free to throw a link in the chat and you can sign up for a demo with us there. And Bill, I see that you currently are using Facebook and Twitter. Awesome. Yeah, I would definitely look into Instagram and LinkedIn. See if you think that those platforms would work for you for sure. Again, like how it probably felt when you started with Facebook and Twitter. It's always a little bit slow to start and that's totally okay. Again, think about which platforms make the most sense for you guys based on where you're trying to attract people, what they're doing. If LinkedIn, if you've got a lot of professionals in your network, start there. That's a great place. Where in BC is Trellis located? So we are based in Kelowna, BC. If you know where that is, we're about four hours to drive from Vancouver, more Eastern than that. But we like to say we're wine country. There's hundreds of wineries around there, or around here, lots of golf courses, and it's the best. Susan, I see that you're hopping off here. And yeah, definitely check out the platform. And we would love to see if there's any ways we can support you. I just struggle to keep making posts in all of these platforms. Barry, that is so relatable. I feel the exact same thing. Definitely something that we've struggled here with at Trellis too with. And what our social, we've got an individual that does social. 
amongst a lot of other things around here. And one of the things that she started doing is just doing scheduling for an entire month. So think about what that could look like for you guys. Maybe it's a month that you're planning out for. Maybe it's just a couple of weeks, but we find that batching all of that work into one single time works really well. Of course, there's more real-time things that you can use, or there's more real-time things that you might want to post about. And of course, that breaks the schedule sometimes, but that's totally okay. Kevin, I see that you just jumped here saying Hootsuite or Buffer. Again, yeah, great platforms. And Hootsuite, I think, is actually based in Vancouver, BC. But great platforms to check out if you want to use all your scheduling in one place. And also, you can pre-schedule for months out in advance or whatever you need to do, too. What else? What other questions do you guys have right now around social media or email marketing or anything else we've talked about today? I don't see pricing for your software. I can definitely share that with you right now. We have a couple different pricing options. So we do have what we call our always free plan. And sorry, it's not on the website. We are just in the process of updating our pricing on there. We do have an always free plan and you can jump on Trellis for free. There's no upfront costs at all. We do a 3.5% Trellis transaction fee on all transactions processed. So on a donation made, any tickets sold, if you're doing silent auction, all of that stuff, we just take 3.5%. And then we do also have some paid plans. Our first paid plan is what we call the pro plan. It's $2.99 a month. Works out to be $35.88 for the year. And then we reduce your Trellis fee down to 1.5%. Or alternatively, we have an enterprise plan, which is if you're doing a lot more fundraising, makes sense for organizations. We do also support in Canada here, at least right now, states we are coming soon for this. We do also do raffles in 5050s as an electronic raffle provider. And so pricing is slightly different for that, but you're looking at six or 8%, depending on the contract you sign. Again, shoot me an email though, and I can just definitely send over pricing details. Or Kevin, if you want to throw your email in the chat here, then I can follow up with you afterwards around all of that. Bill, just going to answer your second question here first, but what is in 50-50? So that would be a raffle or like like a gambling game where you people can buy a ticket. 50% of the ticket goes into a pot for the organization. And then whoever wins the raffle or the draw gets 50% of the pot. So if you raise 10,000 bucks in ticket sales, 5,000 goes to the organization, 5,000 goes to the winner. We find it's a really great way to raise more for an organization because one, the prize is money, so you can engage a really wide audience with that. People will always be down to win some extra money. People also love the game side of it too, and it is a really great way to engage people online only. So if you're not doing an event, a 50-50 is a really good way to get more people participating and, and hanging out with your fundraiser and engaging with you guys. Um, Every single, and Kevin, I'm glad you put this in as I'm saying it, every single province and state has very different rules around how raffles and 50-50s work. Not even state, sometimes at a county level, we can't support, or you've got county rules that are slightly different. We have to just do our research to make sure which places we can actually support. You might already know, Barry just mentioned Florida doesn't allow that. Does your organization prevent us from using it in Florida? So yeah, if Florida doesn't allow online raffles, then we can't support you for a raffle or 50-50. A raffle being like, instead of raffling off 50% of the pot being an actual price, like a prize that you did, then if that is the case, then we can't support that piece of it. But if you're doing tickets or donations or silent auctions or live auctions, funded needs, all of that, we can definitely still support everything else. Just raffles. We wouldn't be able to do. Yeah, I'm not sure about what rules are in Texas. Actually, at this point, we are based in Canada. So we've just started with getting our raffle licenses set up in each province in Canada here first, just because it's, it's just slightly easier being that we're based in the country too. And so our plan is that next year we would potentially start moving into the states. But again, because every single province or every single state and sometimes county is different, there is a lot of learning we need to do before we get there. So I don't know on Texas at this uh, point in time. The other question that you asked actually, Bill, a little bit ago was, is online fundraising still working or are people going back to live events? That is a really good question. What we're seeing most people do is they'll go hybrid. And so they, they will have um, an in-person component because people really missed it. They missed being in the same room as others and talking to others and the social element of it. But they have also found or organizations have also found that there is not a lot of benefit to the online fundraising or virtual fundraising space as well. 
and some organizations are typically opting to do both and do a hybrid event so people can attend in person or virtually they can still tune in. A couple of reasons why people have found that their geographical reach is significantly larger since COVID happened. They're engaging more people across the entire country now, which again, something that they maybe didn't have access to before. It's relatively easy and relatively cheap to actually do virtual elements to your fundraiser. So again, super easy in that regard too. And you can potentially raise more money. As you're thinking about your fundraising, I would encourage you to think about hybrid. Or if you don't want to go hybrid, then what I would do is encourage you to think about doing online fundraising components. So regardless of the people are attending in person on the day of or not, they can all make donations. They can all participate in your silent auction because all of those are online and open to everybody. Yeah. Hopefully that helps. And Barry, I see your message here. I see Bill and Kevin. Wow, you were just a rock star. You're just throwing in the details around uh, charitable raffles in Texas. Thanks for doing that. What else? Any other questions that you guys have at this point that I can help with? Or if you're like, you've said a lot of things and this is all helpful, but I'd love to connect further. Again, feel free to throw your details in the chat and I can follow up with you afterwards as well. If that helps me, I would love to do that too. But I will give you guys a second or two to type here. And if not, maybe Mark, I'll pass back to you. Okay. Thank you, Rebecca. A lot of great information there. I really appreciate your time this evening coming to us from Canada. And thank you to everyone who jumped on.